All right, so we got somebody else. All right, okay. So um, for uh, everybody here who is uh, new, we'll we'll go around and we'll do some some introductions real quick. Uh, forgive me, I'm, I'm still waking up here. Um, and uh, then we'll, what we usually do is we go right into the agenda. So everybody says, you know, whatever they might want to talk about. Um, the, you know, we've got some things that we, we know we need to talk about other than just people's uh, the things like we know we need to talk about GSOC ideas. So we're going to have to talk about that today. Um, yeah. All right. OK, so I'm I'm John. Um, I'm I'm one of the maintainers on the project here. Um, so, uh, we just got a new logo. There's some, some exciting news. Um, I work on CICD, um, and, uh, security and I've done some machine learning stuff. Uh, well, the fair amount of machine learning stuff. So, um, I'll let, uh, Sahil go, go next. All right, well, that's great to hear. All right, so who wants to go next? All right, Lex, do you want to go next? All right, cool. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And do you go you go by Lex then? And what's your GitHub handle? Lex. All right. Cool. I think I'm not sure if I have seen you on here yet. I can't remember who I have seen and who I haven't seen. So I will keep a lookout. All right. Debraj, is it? Debraj. Ah, one of those. Oh, e. All right, Ram. Well, all of a sudden, we're getting some ECE and EE people in here. It's been a ba mainly a bunch of CS CS folks. Um, I wonder. I wonder what uh, what 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 uh, yeah. What prompts? What? How did you guys find us as ECE and EE? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. 
K. All right, great. Well, let's get down to it then. So, um, oops. Great to have you guys here. Um, let's see. So, let's see. So, so, so do you want to uh, kick off today with anything that, that you've got going on? And um, we should actually we should mention we merged the logo, and that was thanks to you reaching out to Jason. Thank you for that. That's very cool. Uh, Yeah. <laughs> y yeah, I do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Wow, that's great. Yes, I do remember to critique. Yeah. I'm not sure if I got his name right, though. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Um, all right. So uh, I do have a note on the um, on the so on the data flow. No, so I've been you know scribbling random notes trying to figure out how do we um, effectively explain the data flow stuff. So so those of you who who had interest in that you'll notice the documentation is a little bit light um so uh it's 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 not it's not ideal so um we need to we need to beef up the documentation and so this is basically i've got scratch work going here where i'm trying to figure out you know how are we how are we going to beef up the documentation um and what i was thinking is is probably a series of tutorials um it will be necessary. I think we've thought this before, but I hadn't really um, figured out, you know, what it should be exactly. Um, so, um, yeah. So essentially, and, and this might be might be interesting. Um, so the goal the goal would be right is would be to to define to be able to define everything via these directed graphs, right? And, and when I say everything, I mean like. This is this this would be I think this would be great um, everything everything um, so uh, it, and and so if you're if you came from doing some ML ops or something like that you know and you're thinking about maybe CI CD pipelines right um, uh, you could you can define your whole um, you would define your your feature um, uh, your oh man oh wow. It is. It must be. My brain must be slow. Uh, feature engineering. Um, you would define your feature engineering in, as as a pipeline, essentially, right? Um, and so uh, you you would define all your your data set generation and your cleanup um, as this directed graph, right? Um, and the reason for that is basically what we would go through in these um, in these uh, tutorials, right? And, and we'll we would walk through for example um you know most most data is generated um by grabbing it from different sources right and part of the reason why you might want to do uh like part of the reason why you might want to use directed graphs to generate your data set instead of um instead of um you know, just just have a a flat file data set is because then when you get a new input, you know how to you know you know how to make a prediction on it, right? Um, and and aside from that, it allows you to create new data sets on the fly, right? Um, so this set of tutorials is going to go through, um, you know, some of the the perils that that um, one finds when writing code <laughs> um, that say accesses the network or something, right? Um, and uh, just just to to recap, you know, some of those things are basically, you know, if you were to access write a bunch of code to access the network, say scrape a lot of web pages, you know, generate your data set, um, you may observe a immediate bottleneck due to uh, you know non parallelization, right? Then you would go through, you would parallelize your download code, right? Um, now this uh, 
<laughs> now, if you've used the multiprocessing module, you know that's not fun, or the threading module, you know that there's going to be some some weird edge cases and errors, right? Um, and those are um, uh, frequently you what? Yeah, yeah, that would be that would be even worse. Yeah, no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> then there would be something really wrong. Um, so yeah, then you might go through. You would download your parallelize the download code. Um, yeah, you'd see error hand, and and that's part of this is that we would want to measure um, measure a few things throughout, right? Um, and this is this will feed feed into the ideas discussion here. So um, so then you would you know a, a common thing that happens is you can't do something in Python. You need to call out to a sub process, right? You, you need to, you need to execute some shell command, right? So this is another thing that if you're doing this in threads, or maybe you're doing this with like multiprocessing dot, um, uh, like the, the process pool executor, um, where you're not in the same thread space, um, you know, you're you're not going to have the signal handler for the um, the sig child, right? When when your when your when your child thread or process exits, uh, because it can only be on one process. Um, so this is immediately going to knock you into um, you know a world of hurt there, right? So then we would show how we move to the event loop, right? And and we we <laughs> we would hopefully measure an increase in speed. Uh, we would see error handling becomes much much more uh, trivial and uh, you you get rid of you you get rid of these sub process issues um, so you know once you have that you would then say well wouldn't it be great to really understand wh what's happening in this massive event loop right um, because uh, you're gonna see web requests flying everywhere and you would like some visibility into the things that, that happen there um, and and then we start uh, getting into this idea of the data flow and 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 you having this like director or orchestrator um, probably the word orchestrator is better um, and that would help us get you know, introducing this orchestrator helps us um, get this actual data flow based execution where we're, we're chaining events and, and we're seeing visibility into that. Um, uh, then we basically, some, somewhere along the line here, we, I need to flush this out still, but uh, we move to the full data flow based implementation. Um, and, and the full data flow based implementation, uh, the, the, that, that would be, there's many, uh, classes involved in the um, in the data flow orchestrator right now as it exists. Um, so there's ones for managing inputs. There's ones for managing um, the operations, like the individual blocks. If you were to look at it, like Lego blocks, right? Um, and um, those all provide you with the ability to extend them, right? Um, and so one of those things that you could extend would you could say, hey, maybe run my data flow in Kubernetes or run it on a remote machine via SSH, right? So now that you've defined your data flow as, um, as uh, you know, as you, you've defined your feature engineering as data flow, uh, you can now run it anywhere, right? Um, so that, that would be nice. Um, so that's kind of like the goal um, of this set of tutorials. And so if you are, um, you know, looking at the documentation, it's not quite clear what <laughs> what the point of having the data flows is. Um, you know, hopefully that clears it up a little bit. Um, so, uh, and this might as well. So, and aside from that, you know, it, it makes it so that you can reconfigure uh, your your input pipeline easily, right? So, okay, one of the things we need to do is think about um, the ideas. Uh, for the next GSOC um, season here. Um, and I believe this is what we did, yeah, the year before last. So I still haven't uh, finished updating this. We need to update it uh, because we haven't done a release yet. Um, so as soon as I do a release, which I've started the process of, um, there's a bunch of compliance stuff that I have to do internally, um, then we will, I'll, I'll publish a new page that says all the things that got done in JSOC and are now in the released version. Um, uh, so 
as far as that, let me make sure that the audio is on here because I did this the other day with Saksham and we did, forgot to record the audio. So we went through this list of things. Um, so we, we're right now pre beta, right? Um, and you guys, you know, I, I know you've used software, right? So once that something hits beta, right, it's sort of more, um, it's more official in a lot of ways, right? Um, and, and you don't want things to change as much once you've hit beta, right? Because you want to provide a consistent experience to your users, right? Pre-beta is when you can sort of change things to your heart's content, right? Um, and not have to worry about, you know, making users mad, right? So everything is very much in an experimentation phase, right? And so we are in that pre-beta pre -beta phase. Now, once we hit beta, we want to be very polished, right? So we want to have all of the, the core functionality of the library worked out right we want to know how exactly people are going to interface with accuracy scores right uh, we want to know how video support works right uh, we want to know uh, you know in general how this remote execution is going to work even if we don't you know support all of the places we might remotely execute yet right we want to know how all these apis are going to work um, from an end user's perspective so that uh, so that you know, as, as we go forward from beta, we're just building out existing capabilities on top of existing, um, uh, you know, interfaces that aren't going to change. Uh, and that way, you know, you don't make people upset. <laughs> uh, because if you, if you then if you once you declare beta, you're sort of saying, hey, I'm stable, and you can depend on me to not change, right? And if pe then people might say, okay, well, now I want to start using this, right? I don't want to use it if I'm constantly going to have to change all my code, right? Um, and so this is where we're headed, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, that's a great idea. Um, so when you say, uh, you know, a design pattern, do you mean, you know, something similar to the high level APIs that we have, like the things? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, so basically just write that up formally. That's what you're saying uh, we should do. Okay, that's a good idea. Yeah, so right now we have that in a few places, um, but we should probably, um, you know, finalize it a little more and make it more official. So let's put this on the to-do list. So uh, to-do, uh, write ADR for design pattern. Um, and so what would feed into that is, you know, the high-level APIs, um, the uh, double context entry, um, the, uh, I think, you know, we need to flush out the data flow uh, definition a little more, right? Um, so data flow. Oh yeah, no way. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Oh wow, awesome. <laughs> well, I've been working on Windows. I know, I know. I am a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, Oh God. Oh no. Oh no. 
Yeah. All right. Okay. So, uh, yeah, Windows is tough. I was, I mean, oof, this is why I haven't had a lot of time to do anything lately. I'm fighting Windows in my, in my, in my day job. Cool. Okay. Um, I should, I'll say a week after next. If you have your test next week, we'll just, you know, put it out there. All right. So, um, so yeah, so we can write up this, this ADR. That would be a good thing to do. Um, I think as far as that goes, um, cause I'm trying to think about, you know, right now I'm trying to think about, uh, what, what, what tells us where we need to go as far as ideas page wise. Right. Um, so this config files in place of command line parameters that is a big one um it's a big one and it's not a big one at the same time um let's see the http api needs to be refactored uh that could be a really good jsrc project data flows with operation implementation so so this is our list of things that we want to do before beta um and so at this point, we're kind of like, we're really closing in on this. Um, we have a lot of plugins. Um, we've flushed that out relatively well. How, how did the plugins work? How do people implement plugins? Um, we, we have some more work to do there, but, but um, doesn't, not, not a huge concern at this point, um, writing more plugins. So one of the things that is a, uh, uh, a big thing that we want to do is auto ML, right? Um, so we have a lot of libraries, right? A lot of machine learning libraries, and we have the ability to, the, the whole idea behind the framework is that you, you, you know, you can make a new model, right? Um, and we have these model interfaces that help you train a model of a particular, you know, based on a particular underlying architecture and framework, right? So we want to, we, we have two things that we want to do for the auto ML side of this, right? Um, let me just auto ML. So uh, we want to implement hyperparameter tuning. Okay, more than two things. Uh, implement model selection uh, based on accuracy score assessment. Um, Okay, yeah, well, this will kind of all be based on accuracy score. So, implement model selection, uh, best model selection, and then implement auto feature engineering. And this is sort of where, you know, DFML kind of is, is, is a little bit different than other things that would do auto ML um, by defining the data flow, by defining your input as a data flow, uh, that's something that we can mutate in an automated way, and we very much want to do that. Um, so that that's an, an interesting thing to explore. Um, how would we, you know, implement automated feature engineering? So uh, the accuracy scores, I don't think there's a project to do here. There might be some side work. Um, Sudhanshu really, really took that one a long way. Um, we need to figure out videos. Uh, I don't think we ever figured that out. I think somebody did some pre-work on it at one point. Hashim. Yeah, yeah. So, wow, my computer is really slow. So, uh, Hashim did some pre-work on this. Yeah, and I think you and I, uh, saw, uh, Sahil, had looked at um, the, uh, we, we had looked at that one kind of very convoluted example, remember? Um, we were going, where you have to pre-process the images using several different models. You remember that? It was like the, uh, where was it? Um, This one, yeah. So we had looked at this, and just to give an idea of the complexity involved here. So um, 
this is sort of one of those where we would be combining um, uh, combining several things, right? And and so the idea here would be um, uh, we said, okay, well, what you know, what if we wrap this model, right? And then we we looked at the and so part of the idea behind DFML is that you could easily wrap research papers like this now easily is is once we're done flushing out all of the APIs and making sure that it is easy right um, so in this one you know they they can uh, remove the remove the uh, the background stuff they can just grab a grab an object out of the scene right um, so when they when they explain how to do this, right, it's more than just uh, you know feed feed your data into this um, directory, right? It turns out you have to uh, resize the videos, get the input object mass. Uh, you, you have to run either one of these models, or and then you have to run this model. Um, so there's several steps involved here, right? So you would define these steps as data flow, right? And then you would need, but but that would require the you that you could run this model, right? And then you would, you know, you'd put this model as a step in your data flow, right? Um, so, you know, a little, little bit complex there. Um, and we need to figure out, you know, how videos work. So, so something, you know, you may, you, for example, you know, you might, you wouldn't need to do, let's see, this is like, you'd probably do, if you were to do a project on videos, you would do, you know, just something that that takes a video just regularly, right? Like maybe I think you, we've talked about doing the YOLO one like a million times. Um, so, you know, maybe you do YOLO, right? Just wrap, you know, you're wrapping an existing approach. You don't have to implement it from the ground up um, because the goal is to figure out how to get uh, like interoperability between models and 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 preprocessors right uh the goal is not really to reinvent the wheel it's the opposite of that right uh, we want to reuse everywhere where possible right so that is one thing to consider um and so we're going to write these up uh, as formal ideas but i just want to put it out there since we're getting close to the time when we do that Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this sounds like it's a change to the model API. Am I hearing that correctly? Yep. Yeah, no, definitely it's optional, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so this would be... And this would go into, you know, our design patterns. So, change uh, to the model API to allow for uh, reporting. And this is another thing that I, I, I'm seeing is that, uh, something that I'm, I'm seeing as I'm going through and documenting the data flow stuff is that we have a real need, and, and we talked about this a couple years ago now, but we have a real need for fine-grained um, uh, metric output. Um, so kind of like you know, like you're saying here, right? The ability to report out intermediate representations, the ability to report out data while things are in progress within a data flow, um, all of that. We need to figure that out. Um, so, need to figure out, um, uh, you know. Mm hmm. 
Yep, yep, exactly. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Yep. I love it. So this is, I think it's Onyx, right? Yeah, I love that idea. Yeah, because you already implemented the uh, data flow. Oh, look at that. You implemented the data flow on save load, right? So you could just throw in an operation to that where it runs through Onyx. Ah, oh, beautiful, beautiful. I love it. All right. Okay, so does that sound, that sounds right to you? All right, great. I love that. Ah, oh, that is just, that's just, mm. That's good. That's nice. Oh, I love it. Um, okay, so we can figure out uh, how to um, throw in an Onyx uh, conversion uh, to the save load data flows. Oh man, all the work that you did would make that should make that so easy. That oh, I love it. Onyx conversion to the save load uh, of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, um, so right now, right now I am... What? Yeah, bogged down. Yeah, to say the least. I've been working like six thirty to, to to ten p.m. Um, okay, so I let's see. So what needs to be done here? Maybe we should just have. Okay, what needs to be done here? So what needs to be done for this one is. So okay, so. So I need to prove this out um, when, when yeah okay I need to think about this I was hoping to uh, I'm always hoping I've been hoping to get to this for over a year now um, yeah I need to prove this out we, we should probably have a whole session on this and we can plan out how exactly it will work um, I, because there's a lot that needs to happen here. There's a lot and there's not a lot. It's, 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 yeah. Um, so I don't know. We will, let's just schedule a session. So um, I'll just schedule some time. I'll schedule some time and I'll run through it. Um, maybe I'll make a video or something and I'll just talk about what needs to be done. Does that sound good? All right, cool. Something, something to keep me honest on on needing to get this done. <laughs> Let me make it. Yeah. Let me make it. Uh, say what? Yes, the web UI. Mm-hmm. This, 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 I think this needs to be in beta. Actually, I had a discussion with a team internally um, the other day, and they were looking for exactly what we're doing here. Um, they were like, you know, we want to be able to find these uh, random test flows via JSON files, which would be how, you know, we can serialize the data flows to, to JSON. Um, and they wanted to um, run things in parallel, right? And they wanted a web UI to help them design their flows. Um, so this is, <laughs> you know, I think, I think this is, this is something that would be good. So, mm-hmm.
Yeah, I actually have... Yeah. I do have somebody who uh, who was asking me about GSOC and is a JavaScript person, so I might be able to get her in here to do that. So as a project, yeah, yeah, I think they're a little bit busy at this point, uh, but they could be good mentors on this one. Yes. That's right, they did that handwrite UI, and they did the. Um, um, simulate. Ah, uh, yeah. So, build tree. So, I don't know if this will be a this year thing. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think we probably want to do the second. I went back and forth on that, but uh, we, we likely want to do the second party thing first. Um, so this is a org that, uh, some of the previous GSOC students have created where, I mean, they, they want to just help people write software, um, you know, connect, uh, students and other, uh, people to, to try to, you know, say, Hey, I've got this idea, but I need somebody who writes JavaScript, right? For example, I know how to do Python. I can do this part, but I need somebody to, to that can do JavaScript, uh, to help me on this other part, right? Um, and so then they, they help connect people and, and, and do projects and, and help out here and there. That's the goal. So uh, cool stuff. Um, we need to uh, figure out eventually, we, we talked about uh, moving DFML under this org because uh, this is, you know, uh, previous GSOC students. So, you know, uh, part of the problem with what we have right now is that the permissions on the Intel stuff is not flexible. Um, I'm the only one with permissions, which is not ideal. Um, so it would be great if we could move this out to a different org um, where, uh, you know, everybody can have permissions on it, right? Or everybody who's a maintainer can have permissions on it, right? Because uh, right now, you know, we can, we can really only get people doing uh, reviews, right? Um, they don't have permissions to merge. So... We're looking at, at moving it over there. Um, that also means that we can release a lot faster. Um, so, uh, because there's a lot of uh, legal and security compliance uh, steps that, that need to happen. And uh, if we were not under Intel, we would not have to do them. So, um, yeah. All right. So, that is, you know, TBD on governance. They need to figure out their governance documentation um, before they do that. And that governance documentation is like, um, you know, hey, if I wanted to become a contributor, what do I do? If I want to become from a contributor to a maintainer, you know, what do I do? Right. You know, what's my path to progression to like grow my, um, you know, uh, presence in this org. Right. So they need to figure out their governance. So, and this is probably this is probably not going to happen for this year's GSOC, realistically, because uh, that all ha will happen pretty soon, and I don't think they have their governance stuff set up, and uh, so we'll probably, you know, we'll probably be a Python Software Foundation sub org, and they'll be a, you know, maybe their own org or under Python Software Foundation, and then we can look at, you know, next year, uh, moving it over there, maybe. Um, I think that would be good. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have too much going on for that. Um, so, yeah, so. Over there. Because uh, I also have to sell it to legal. So I have to be like, hey, this is great. Um, should move the project over there. Um, and having them have gone through GSOC will beef that up. Um, Okay. All right, great. So um, let's jump back to our, anything else you wanted to talk about? Any other ideas there? Yeah, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> no, you, you, you won't be able to get rid of me. <laughs> Don't worry. 
Yeah, no, don't worry. You won't be. Yeah, you you won't be able to get rid of me. No, that's uh, that's for sure. Um, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, no. I I I want to make sure that that other people have more autonomy over the project, right? Um, but uh, you know, I definitely will be involved, right? Uh, I think that we're doing really cool stuff here, and uh, you know, I would love would would like nothing more than to continue being involved in this, right? Uh, I just want to make sure that the project can go faster um, by not having me as a bottleneck. So, um, okay, so this is great. I'm glad we covered that. I think that is the Onyx stuff. That That is a really, really, really good idea. And you laid the groundwork for that nicely. Um, so that is probably a piece of a project because at this point, I, I mean, I'm not sure what that takes to onyx in and onyx out of model um, but that was something that was on the wish list for a long time i think there's a really old issue about it um, so that thanks for bringing that up um, the remote execution stuff uh, i've been messing around with that this is not something that i'd want to stick somebody on um, because the data flow tutorial documentation is not flushed out enough yet um, so uh, yeah, I don't want to saddle anybody with that. It might it might be um, maybe I'll try to flush it out before GSOC um, uh, in my ample free time. Um, config files in place of command line parameters. Yeah, this one this one is important. Um, I think this is one that's a, that's a good GSOC project. Is it though? I'm not sure if there's enough work here at this point. There's, yeah, that's true. Yeah, and this, so this one combined with uh, the one below it could be a good project. So basically, um, the way that everything works is is there's all these classes um, and, and you'll notice that there's like config classes everywhere. So let's take a look at the API. Um, so let's go to um, model SLR. Okay, so model SLR config. Oh, this is kind of not the best, is it? Well, that's a bummer. Okay, we need to improve that. That's not ideal at all. Hmm, that's not ideal at all. Well, this sucks. Okay, we need to fix this. Um, okay, we need to fix this. Um, all right, so we need to improve. All right, okay. All right, well, the point being Everything is this class. Everything has a config class, and this would go into that ADR that we need to write about the, what's the API. Um, so, you know, anytime you want, and this is also what allows us to have ser serializability and, and the remote network stuff, is if everything is a, a serializable class, then you can basically, you know, you can keep the arguments to something like that when you, that need to be given to it for instantiation separate from the actual instance, and then you can just move it around all you want, right? Um, so uh, so the goal behind uh, this one would be uh, these config classes are populated from a variety of sources, right? Um, and so that could be the command line. Um, if we fix this issue, it would be maybe a config file. Um, and it also might be like the HTTP API if you're instantiating this via the HTTP API. Um, and so what would be nice is that we have all these tutorials and you'll notice a lot of them are CLI based, right? So what would be nice is if you could take, for example, um, oops, okay, I guess we're here now. All right, click, click, click. All right, um, what would be nice is if you could take any command line invocation and turn it, like turn the command line parameters into a config file or turn them into the arguments for an HTTP call, right? Uh, sort of like a bi-directional con 
like converter, right? Because this would allow you to quickly experiment maybe in Python or on the command line and then turn it into, you know, something that you would use, you know, in a more production setting like an HTTP call, right? Um, so that would be really interesting. I think the two of those together could be a good project. Um, probably not enough for either of them. Uh, so this is something that's being flushed out. So, so the other thing behind the data flows is that, you know, if you define everything in this, uh, you know, high level, uh, you know, basically call graph, right, then you don't have to care about what language it's implemented in. Um, so I think I prototyped some of this stuff, uh, need to write up more docs on that so that people could actually get going. Um, I think we did the pre-made data flow, data cleanup data flows, but flushing that out more would be good. Um, yeah, Sudan Shu did that. So that will move to the done section when we do the next release. Um, yeah, okay. So, and aside from that, um, yeah, there's, there's, so that covers a lot of stuff. So videos, auto ML, um, the config file stuff, the onyx on the, the, the archiving. Um, I think the main, one of the main things that still needs to be done is the API around data flows. Um, we don't have, it's not, it's not pretty. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty low, low level and focuses on like the, uh, it's just like a light wrapper on top of the, uh, the actual serialized format. Um, and, and that needs to be flushed out. And I know Sahil that you had, um, uh, an idea around, you know, defining it more like a, 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 a PyTorch model, right? Really? I think, I think yeah, I wouldn't concern with that right now. I would say, because even if you can write some of the skeleton of how it should look, then somebody else could go and and and, and link the, the format wise, right? And, and just do that translation, right? Um, because all you're doing is there, there's going to be a lot of different ways that we define data flows. If, if you think about it at a, at a very high level, right? Like we're going to define them via the web UI, you know? Um, there's going to be, you know, there's, there's many ways which we might want to do it. We might want to do like some operator overload syntax, right? Um, to to with with in Python code, right? Um, I think that there's going to be different approaches that resonate with different people, um, and we'll we might we may showcase you know this one, right? This PyTorch similar one, right? Uh, but then we're always going to give people multiple options, right? So if you do get a chance to to, to look at the scaffold um, and 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 post that that would be cool oh yeah 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 definitely okay great cool I just wanted to keep that on the radar so then the other thing is um i think there's something to be done with um like a active learning type setup um where you've got you know somebody in the loop continuously um uh you know you know, maybe uh, giving you more classifications or, or sort of directing your training as it's happening. Uh, so, so all of this is based on like a, a stream-based approach. So you'll see async everywhere in the code. Now, it doesn't mean everything is streams. Right now, everything is is sort of blocks of memory um, being moved around um, and not a lot of actual stream usage. But, but the APIs are all set up so that you could have... Um, so, so that you could stream any of the data, right? Um, and you can do all this real time, right? Um, so that's another thing that sort of differentiates, um, you know, what, what we're trying to do here from 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 a lot of other things, right? Um, so, 
Mm -hmm. Ah, yes, and that's hopefully what will be addressed in that tutorial I was talking about. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think, and this is exactly what I'm hoping to flesh out in this, uh, the tutorial that I outlined here, this will all cover, this will be also like, uh, it's a tutorial about data flows, but it's also a tutorial about async, because the data flows are inherently asynchronous, um, in that uh, they're, they're a giant event loop, sort of. Um, so this will be covered here. So uh, let me just link to this. Um, Oh, and then there was the project around open source health. Okay, so. Okay. And then, so do you guys have any ideas that you uh, thought of um, for GSOC that, that, that when you saw, you know, uh, that, that you've thought about as as um, interesting project idea? It can really be... It can really be anything. Um, we can usually find a way to relate it. <laughs> so if you have any ideas, you know, shoot them out. Any? All right. Mm -hmm. All right, great. So I think this would build a lot on the work that Sudhachu has done uh, last year. I know he did some data set cleanup stuff. Um, so this uh, this is definitely something and this and, and you know, thinking about that auto ML stuff around feature engineering that we talked about, this fits right into that. And that's definitely an area that we need to flush out. Um, so I think that would make for uh, a great uh, GSOC uh, proposal. So did I get that right? You said principal component analysis. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, object detection. Um, so I would say that right now we really want to just, we, the, the purpose of the video project would be really just any use case to determine how do we deal with frames and how do we, because cause the setup right now is mostly around structured data. I think we have a few things with images. Um, the purpose of a project around videos would be to to it wouldn't have to matter what the use case is now it does have to matter in some senses we try to stay away from things like uh, anything that might have any possible ethical implications um, because we don't want to get in a review with the legal department um, or the ethics department so uh, you know resolution enhancement great you know maybe 
uh, people detection, I'm not sure, right? Anything with people, we try to stay away from, right? Uh, you never know, you never know, but, but best to just steer clear, right? We got enough problems on this project, <laughs> enough technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, maybe resolution enhancement. Um, so, uh, or some, I, I like the resolution enhancement one. That's, that's, that's always a, a fun one. I think that's a really cool use case. There's so many videos that could be higher resolution. <laughs> so, um, so uh, this would be a good one. I'll put uh, So anything else GSOC idea wise? Hmm. Yeah, I think, and I think right now that's what we have is is you basically select one kind of accuracy representation. Um, so, are you saying that that we could have some potential to say, you know, score based on a set of accuracy? Is that what you're saying? I like that. I like that a lot. Um, any? Mm -hmm. Okay, I like that a lot. Um, so, uh, could we provide a way to score? And all of this stuff helps us build to that auto ML, like that real nice auto ML capability, right? I mean, at the end of the day, I think the vision for this is you take any data set and you say, okay, DFML, what are some things that you learned about this data set, right? And you, it would just go and train on every possible permutation, right? And, and every possible model config. And it says, hey, you know, here's the things that you can, here, here's the things I learned about this data set. Here's, you know, some interesting predictions that you can make if you have this kind of data. And then, you know, if you extend that to data flows, then you can say, okay, well now go, go use that, right? So score uh, to assess score based on multiple accuracy representations. I like that, that's a good one. Um, okay, any other ideas GSOC wise? Yep. So we had something that we'd looked at for a while around um, at the, okay, we're about to get kicked off this call, um, but we we had something that we looked for. Okay, so we'll just say um, we need to look at this and um, we're getting the countdown here. So thanks everyone for joining today um, and uh, we'll hopefully see, see you next week and if not, we'll see you on Getter. So. All right. Thanks, guys. Great meeting you.